I'm Dr. Stephen Waldron. Today I want to give you a technical overview of the XML schema for the ASTM Continuative Care Record Standard. The standard itself is represented by two different artifacts. The XML schema is one. The other is the implementation guide, which is a narrative document that talks about the semantics of the CCR and talks about each of the different segments and um, elements inside the CCR and gives you a uh, good definition and examples of how they should be used. The XML schema gives you the, the structure um, and the ability to validate uh, CCR instances. And that's what we'll be talking about today. I'm using a product from uh, Sun called NetBeans, which is an open source Java integrated development environment, which has an expansion pack allowing XML editing. Um, so I'm using it today to uh, go over the XML schema. If we switch over from the, the raw XML view of the schema to the design view, um, the root element here of a CCR is the continuity of care record element. This, the CCR itself is represented kind of logically by three different um, groups of elements, the header, the body, and the footer. Um, the header here is represented by um, this, this listing here of uh, elements. The body itself does have an enclosing tag. And then the footer here is another logical segment, uh, like the header, that does not have an enclosing tag of um, a series of elements. And we'll kind of go over all these um, uh, today. The first, if we scroll back up to the top and look at the header, the first header element is the CCR document object ID. This is a globally unique string for every instance of a CCR. Um, there are constraints with inside the implementation guide which represent uh, what a valid uh, string would be for this particular element. The next is language, and this allows you to represent what the native language of the content of the CCR is in. Uh, we have the ability to do the free text and also a coded value. Um, a common uh, coded vocabularies being used for language is the ISO 639, um, which has two versions, uh, dash 01 and dash 02. The next is version, uh, and this is the which version of the CCR this uh, particular instance is. Currently there is only one version, version 1.0, but we're actively working on version 2.0 of the standard. The next is date time, and this is the date and time that the CCR was generated. Um, it should be in ISO 8601 format, and again, more definition of that is in the implementation guide. The next is patient, and this is a rep reference to an actor, which is the patient. Um, you are able to uh, represent, uh, in the extreme case of conjoined twins, two patients. Um, that is really the only use case where two patient elements should be used. The next is the from, and this allows you to represent people, organizations, and information systems from which the CCR is being generated. And the two allows you to represent people, organizations, and or information systems that the CCR is being sent to. Um, the, the sent is, or the to section here is optional. The next and last um, segment of the uh, header is the purpose, and this is the purpose that the CCR was uh, generated for and or transmitted for. Um, the next here is the body, and we'll talk about that in just a second. I want to drop down a little bit further into the, the footer segment. The first of the footer uh, elements is the actor, and this is um, a normalized set of information about people, organizations, and information systems um, that are referenced inside this CCR. Um, so instead of representing the actor and repeating that information at every instance um, inside the CCR, we've normalized that to uh, be put here down the actor section and a, uh, an ID is used to reference um, this particular actor. Um, it does make it a little easier too to de excuse me, to do de-identification of the CCR, you're able to lop off the actor section here um, and do um, a de-identification of a CCR instance. The next is references, and this allows you to reference external documents. The next is comments, which allows you to place comments on different data objects inside the CCR. Uh, comments should not be used for clinical data, though. And the final footer section here is the signatures, and this allows us to uh, capture and represent um, data for digital signatures, which allows you to, to digitally sign uh, different elements within inside the CCR. 
So if we go back up here to the to the body section and open up the body section, what we'll see is 17 segments which represent the clinical data of a CCR. The first is payers, which represents uh, insurance information and other financially responsible um, entities. The next is advanced directives, allows us to represent uh, such things as, as do not resuscitate orders. It also allows you to, to uh, reference external legal documents that are the advanced directives for a patient. The next is support, allows you to represent uh, support support uh, entities that are not you know, traditional healthcare, per, you know, licensed healthcare providers. This would be such things as um, next of kin, emergency contacts, um, a chaplain, uh, those types of uh, entities. The next is functional status, and this allows us to represent uh, any functional limitations for a patient. And the next we have a problem list, and then we have a family history, and we have a social history. The next element here is alerts and this allows us to capture um, data that's of critical importance uh, for decision making um, on a patient anytime a CCR is received or viewed. The main use of alerts is for allergies so any allergies to medications or environmental agents uh, would be uh, listed here in the alerts section. Other types of alerts could be uh, medical, um, to me, metabolic disorders, or critical lab values could be uh, placed here in the alerts as well. And again, this is thought to be of those things that are of critical importance uh, that you can give them extra weight in a CCR by putting them here in the alerts section. The next is medications, and this allows us to represent any over-the-counter or prescription medications. It also allows us to represent uh, fulfillment history. Uh, the medication section of the CCR is uh, very detailed, and it harmonizes with the NCPDP script 8.1 standard. And it also implements some of the, the draft work from the NCPDP uh, working group on the structured SIG. The next here is medical equipment, and this allows you to represent any durable medical equipment such as uh, a CPAP machine or a wheelchair or a scooter. The next here is immunizations, allows you to represent an immunization history and also has detailed information about uh, immunization administration. Next here is uh, vital signs and results. Results allow us to represent any lab or other diagnostic tests or um, any observations. And procedures allows us to represent any um, you know, outpatient or inpatient uh, procedures that were done on this particular patient. And encounters allows us to represent any um, medical encounters that were done um, by this patient. Everything up to now has really been historical information for this uh, particular patient. Uh, if we're looking for uh, planning for the future, that's the plan of care section. Um, this plan of care section allows us to represent things that should be done in the future, which allows us to um, represent cer certain things such as chronic disease management that should be done in the future, preventive services that should be done, and again, any you know encounters or procedures or lab tests or uh, immunizations that should be done um, in the future can be represented here in the plan of care section. And the final body segment here is the healthcare providers, and this allows us to represent uh, a listing of uh, any uh, clinicians that are responsible in some fashion for the care of this patient. So that is an overview of the CCR. Um, in the future, what we hope to be able to do is go into more depth in the different segments and elements inside the CCR. I hope this has given you enough information to kind of start delving into the, the standard itself and really start to look at um, your strategies for implementing the standard in your products. I appreciate your time. Uh, please give us back any feedback, uh, and I hope you uh, have a great day.